marching to new heights of development under the dynamic and young leadership of Dr. Pramod Savan. A visionary leader, a meticulous administrator, tirelessly working on the dream to take Goa ahead. Goa Ahead is brought to you by the Department of Information and Publicity, Government of Goa. Hello and welcome. A stinging order in the High Court against the reservation process of municipal elections and an interim stay in the Supreme Court. Now let us have a look at this roller coaster ride of Goa's municipal elections. It was a last minute relief to the Goa government from the Supreme Court who stayed the High Court order on the municipality reservations with regards to five municipal councils. As hardly few hours were left for the nomination process to conclude on March 4, the Apex Court kept in abeyance the State Election Commission order, keeping on hold the polls in five municipalities Margao, Mapsa, Marmagao, Kepe, and Sange. The Honorable Supreme Court of India today stated the order of the High Court, whereby the High Court had set aside the elections to five municipal councils. The Honorable Supreme Court has suomoto stated the order of the Election Commission, whereby the election process in respect of these five municipalities was suspended. Now, this has paved way for conducting of this election and a democratic process has been restored back. Now, the matter is fixed for final hearing by the Supreme Court on Tuesday and on that day it will be finally argued. So we can now go ahead with the election process. Ever since the reservations in the municipal wards were announced on February 4, the local body elections have been into controversy, with state government facing hit from opposition as well as within the ruling. As many as 102 wards across 11 municipal councils were reserved for women, scheduled tribes, scheduled caste and other backward classes in the municipal area. The reservations led to much uproar with the opposition parties and sitting councillors, expressing complete displeasure in the manner in which the reservation and delimitation was done and notified by the government. The councillors from Margao, Mabsa, Marmagao, Sangye and Kepe approached the High Court seeking justice. The petitioner pointed out gross anomalies in the reservation and delimitation of wards where the government failed to give required 33.3% reservation for women as well as 27% reservation to the other backward classes. The violation of rotation policy was also pointed out by the petitioner. While the state government contended till the end that the court cannot intervene once the election process is set rolling, the division bench of the High Court came down heavily with both government and the election authority were taken for task. On March 1, High Court struck down the ward reservation notification with regards to these five councils and directed the municipal administration to rectify all the errors and issue fresh notification. Even the state election body was asked to initiate the process for a fresh election schedule in these poll-bound areas. The elections including nominations, polling and counting of votes has to be completed by April 15. The court slammed the municipal administration for making reservation based on his whims and caprices. It also pointed out how the different yardsticks have been applied in respect of different municipal councils. Questioning the very purpose of announcing election schedules on February 22, when the petitions were pending in the court, the division bench rightly said that, based on these artificial events, the entire defence was to press for the hands of Dr. Reen and overlook the gross illegalities. The court was clear in its observation that 33.33% reservations for women was missing in these municipal areas and there is no justification for that. The bench also declined to grant any stay on its own order as pleaded by the government, seeking time to approach the Supreme Court, stressing that the elections are imminent. The order, though took, government to back foot, made ground for them to challenge it before the apex court seeking a stay. On March 3, the government filed a total nine special leave petitions seeking stay on High Court order while maintaining its contention that the elections are imminent and once the process is set rolling, court cannot intervene. 
the Supreme Court while well, granting the stay on the HC verdict and also on the election commission order to keep in abeyance the polls in the five municipal areas has said that the order is issued on technical grounds as SLP will become infractious if no interim stay is granted. The term of 11 councils ended on November 4, 2020 and the elections have been due since August 2020. The polls were postponed twice on account of COVID-19 pandemic situation in the state. The functioning of the councils is currently overlooked by the administrators. The elections for the municipal councils are scheduled on March 20. The fate of these five municipalities will be decided on March 9 when the Supreme Court is set to hear the matter all over again for the disposal. This is an unprecedented situation. High court has wrapped the government without suspending the election process yet extending it by almost a month blatant violations of constitutional mandates while reserving the votes have led to this complex situation election commission has notified withdrawn the notification and re-notified election to 5 out of 12 municipalities in last 15 days what will this situation lead to i have two eminent personalities panelists with me in the studio first senior counsel and the man who is going to take us through these nuances nitin bab sadasya nitin bab welcome thank you second i have with me the man i think probably who is battling in the high court and now giving briefs in the supreme court lawyer for the state election commission shashikan joshi shashikan bab welcome to the show nitin bab i'll start with you uh, you have seen the high court order you have seen what happened in the supreme court yesterday Uh, and there is lot of politics around a case like this but has there been a phenomenal shift from what the high court said to what has happened in the supreme court yesterday and what can we expect on tuesday well uh, as far as answering your expectation on tuesday uh, that will amount to speculation uh, which i as a senior counsel would not want to indulge in but as far as the shift is concerned i personally feel that there has not been a major shift from what the honorable high court held in its judgment and the stay of the honorable supreme court the reason is this that uh, there was hardly any time for the court to have gone through the docket placed before it there was hardly any time for the lawyers to have prepared themselves to argue it finally so in these circumstances the honorable supreme court felt that uh, we'll give it a fixed date and thought it fit to keep it on tuesday so that the matter could be decided one way or the other finally now what happens is the timeline for filing of the nominations and other process of elections was coming to an end now if without granting any stay if the honorable supreme court had to just place it on tuesday the whole petition before it would have been uh, infractious so therefore in these circumstances what i feel the honorable supreme court has done is it has only granted what is known as a very technical stay uh shashikan bab then yes. I, i come to you directly if that's the case and that's the technicality of it then uh, do you think the election commission acted in a haste by saying that we are again declaring the election on 21st march when the rest of the municipalities are going for election on 20th march wouldn't it have been better if the election commission had waited till tuesday see again what happens is this we know uh, whatever is whatever whatever may be the outcome on tuesday the movement the honorable supreme court has basically granted an an ex parte ad interim stay in the matter we had to comply by the goa state election commission had to comply with that order whatever is passed by the honorable supreme court of india so it is in that view of the matter that uh, and ultimately the the uh, the, the timelines were running out the the uh, you must be aware that uh, yesterday was the last date for accepting of nominations mm. entire day election process can be completed now if honorable supreme court interferes with the order uh, or or the whatever interference there it it continues with the that uh, same stand uh, interim relief that is granted so in view of that situation uh, the election the uh, intentions of the election commission would be to complete the election process mm. by 22nd and so that way i don't find anything wrong done by the election commission mm. uh sheshkan bab before i go back to nitin bab again uh do you consider is that many people are trying to project this as a kind of a victory yesterday's interim stay 
as a lawyer do you see it really that way or you are just seeing this as a technicality and you you will prefer to trade cautiously i i feel it is more of uh, a technicality mm -hmm. because uh, as uh, learned senior counsel mr sarvesh has said uh, the court has not gone gone into the merits of the case mm -hmm. it is basically ex, ex an ex parte ad interim stay without hearing the parties mm -hmm. now that is also based on number of judgments which are passed by the honorable supreme court of india right in sr bombay mm -hmm. with that is a nine page nine bench judgment there are number of the judgments including punnu swami mm -hmm. so it is basically mandate that once the election process starts or once once the elections were imminent the high court should not have interfered it is on that basis only that was the only point according to me that was considered by the honorable <coughs> supreme court mm -hmm. when the ex parte stay has been granted uh, nitin bab now that's the i think the basic point of law that is that is under contention that the high court order whether it is an interference in the election process when you go through that order uh, how do you read it is it an interference is it an intervention and whether it is in violation of the judgment of a constitutional bench how do you look at it as a senior counsel as i look at the order it is very craftily written order it is a well studied order what the law position of law is this see once the election process starts you are not supposed to interfere with it because interference with the election process is interference with the right of a entire community the parties who has approached the court are persons who are interested maybe in contesting the elections so the fight although visibly is between two contestants or two political parties the right that the court decides is that of the entire community who wants a representation in the constituency or a ward so with this award object the principle of law is you are not going to interfere with the election process now that very judgment that is mohinder singh gill's judgment which says that you should not interfere with the election process also says that in the event your orders whatever that you may pass do not interfere or retard the progress of election or are for the purpose of completion of the process of elections then you may nevertheless pass such orders now the learned judges have taken refuge in the latter part of their of this particular principle they say that whatever we have done does not amount to interference with the process of elections the simple reason is that we are just permitting you certain extra time additional time mm -hmm. we are not stopping you all from doing anything in this additional time please correct the position let the entire election be fair let it be puritan let it be in consonance with the principles of our constitution mm -hmm. for which if you take 10 more days heavens will not fall the rights of the citizens may not be affected it is either ways it is a victory the citizens in 10 days time will know who is going to represent them yeah. at the same time the contesting parties will carry an impression that they had a very fair deal at the elections yeah. so it's a very balanced order according to me uh, shishkar I, I i am tempted to ask you this because who has gone for appeal in the supreme court is the state of goa Uh, it's not the state election commission. Yes. So, does the state election commission consider this order of the high court as interference in the election, or you are simply preferring to be a bystander to see what happens in the Supreme Court? No. Uh, see that way, uh, it 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 will have to be considered as an order interfering with the ongoing election process. Mm. For the simple reason, the entire process was supposed to be completed by twenty second of uh, March. because 24th as i have said the budget session of the assembly will start 27 is the inauguration of the new uh, new uh, building of the high court so it is in view of this that it was planned that the election entire election process would be completed by 22nd now imagine a situation wherein now we will now in view of the order of the honorable high court this process will prolong up to 15th of april imagine the conditions what will what will happen to the code of conduct uh, as far as budget session is concerned it is budget session lot of things are uh, lot of announcements are uh, uh, likely to be made mm. by the by the uh, whoever is a by the finance minister mm. so it is in view of this that uh, state election commission had also programmed uh, fixed its program accordingly mm. well, of course i will as far as merits of the judgment are concerned uh, it is a well merited judgment it is a well reasoned judgment mm. it is a judgment uh, given on merits mm. uh, you agree with that nitin bab that Uh, okay you are saying that we are the, you are not suspending the election process but by merely extending it 
you have changed course of many set things. Do you do you agree to that? Change of set things meaning uh, if you take the word very strictly, uh, the election process, the elections should have been held by the 20th of March, if I mistake not, mm. which now will stand extended till the 15th of April. So mm. to that extent, there has been a change. Mm. But every change, we should not be obscurantist and be averse to any change. Any change which is in the interest of the public, which is in interest of our constitution, should always be welcome. Change mm. nevertheless it is. Uh, uh, very clearly, don't you think the biggest issue in this High Court order also and the petitions also was violation of constitutional mandates. Uh, do you think that now that the matter is in the Supreme Court, uh, aspect as serious as that will be kept aside merely because the process should not be interfered with? I do not expect. Uh, it to be like that. What I expect is if the Honorable High Court goes into, uh, Honorable Supreme Court mm. goes into the merits of the case, uh, the, the judgment is very strong on merits. Mm. I, and the uh, courts, court, uh, Honorable Supreme Court may not even interfere with the judgment. Mm. That's, my, that's my personal opinion about the mm. whole, whole issue. Mm. Uh, so, Nitin Bab, when do you look at this judgment and that, that very crucial point that constitutional mandates were not met while doing this reservation process. Uh, how do you think uh, it is going to weigh in the Supreme Court and how crucial aspect is that when we look at what's going to happen on Tuesday? Hmm. Now in this particular case, two interesting qu uh, questions of law arise. Both are constitutional. Hmm. One is reservation while the other is the process being stalled or extended for a further time. Hmm. It all depends now what view the Honorable Supreme Court will take. None of these views, according to me, could be wrong. It mm. depends on that day what the court will feel. Either mm. ways, part of the constitution will be upheld. Mm. Uh, very interesting view. Shashikan Bab, how do you look at it? It's, 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 a, it's a contest between not right or wrong. It's a contest between a constitutional mandate versus judgment of a constitutional bench. Uh, how tricky do you think is the situation? See, uh, there has been interference in the course of the elections. Mm. That cannot be disputed because the entire course has been changed. Mm. But why it has been done? It is a recent order again because ultimately there is a violation of constitutional mandate mm. as far as reservations are concerned. Mm. Enter delimitation and reservation, both there is a violation of constitutional mandate. Mm. It is in view of this situation that the, if the, that is why I said that the, if the Honorable uh, Supreme Court goes into the merits of the issue, the outcome may be one. Mm. If it doesn't go into the merits and basically takes the view that whatever is possible, that could have been deferred to the uh, uh, to the uh, post-election scenario by way of election petitions, then the then the outcome would be different. It mm. would be that way. Uh, how rare is this order of the High Court? Uh, as a lawyer, uh, were you expecting that such kind of a order would come? To a certain extent, one could say it's a surprise because mm. the, considering the normal. Uh, understanding of the election law where the high courts or the supreme courts do not interfere with the process. Uh, it's not that such orders have not been passed in the past but they have been rarity. But uh, once you say something is rare, it's always exceptional. An exception goes to prove the rule. So one would normally go by the rule saying that no one is going to stall. But this case appears to be a case where uh, things have gone more on, uh, if I may use the term on admission of guilt, mm. where uh, the, uh, learn, uh, the election commission said that there was a mistake there because uh, certain reservations were not done in terms of the percentage required or mandated by the constitution. And uh, the state government also could not run away from the fact that uh, there was such a lacuna kept behind. Mm. Now, on a pointed query to them on this issue, they could not uh, say no to it and uh, rightly so, they are not supposed to unnecessarily deny things when uh, it's not uh, correct to deny. Mm. Now, once you admit that there is a mistake, once there is an admission of this guilt, thereafter uh, you can't raise the argument say, and say that, say, so what if I am wrong, uh, you cannot stop me. Now, you can't tell a constitutional authority that. Uh, Shishkan Bab, uh, was it a surprise from State Election Commission's point of view? You are not expecting that kind of an order uh, or after that admission that yes, there are problems in this reservation process, you are expecting this kind of an order. See, uh, no, I was, it, it, was a, it, it was a surprise but it was also a pleasant surprise in one sense. Mm. It's because 
we, anybody could know that there was a violation of constitutional mandate as far as reservations are concerned. Mm. It is in view of this, that kind of a situation that it was, I will basically say that this was, but then it was a rarity in the sense, mm. because in view of the lo lot of judgments which are passed by the Honorable Supreme Court, wherein High Court has, High Courts have been again and again told by the Supreme Court that please do not interfere, the, interfere with the election process. Mm. So that is how I, I, I will take it as. Uh, a very crucial question now is yesterday's notification of the election commission saying that okay we will extend the nomination time for by two days and the date of election by one day. Uh, do you think the state election commission should have waited till Tuesday or it is well within its rights to issue that notification? It is well within its right to hmm. issue that notification especially when the Honorable Supreme Court has granted that particular uh, stay. Maybe hmm. a technical one but there is a stay. Nothing comes in way of the hmm. state election commission following its duties as mm. written by the constitution. What is happening is, a yeah. lot, lot has been said about the state election commission and the judgment of the Honorable High Court. In fact, that would be something which I have to basically uh, draw your attention to. Mm. Uh, see, uh, you have Panchayat Raj Act, uh, the, uh, the basically the provisions of the Panchayat Raj Act as well as Municipalities Act. The powers of reservation and delimit delimitation are vested in the state government. Mm. Now, for the Honorable High Court basically has expressed its displeasure that the election commission did not insist on correction of this error or was not willing to take it up on, on its shoulders. Mm. It's because basically that, uh, that the, I was concerned with that issue because that is the reason why I feel that interference by the Honorable High Court was a must in, the, in this case. Mm. Because the election commission on its ultimately it is a government, uh, government elected government. Mm. And if even if let us, it was pointed out to the Honorable Court by the Election Commission that in the panchayat, as far as panchayat matters are concerned, lot of letters were written by the Election Commission to the state government, which were even not taken cognizance of. Mm. There was no response from the uh, from the government. So it in the, in that at the most, what could have been done by the Election Commission was write again to the government, mm. make a request letter. But there is no way in which. They, uh, the state election commission would have changed the scenario as far as reservations are concerned. Mm. And to that extent, I will say the blame given to the election commission by the Honorable High Court was basically uh, uncalled for or it was something which is more than what they expected. Then let me come to my last question. I will go to Nitin Buff first. Considering this legal provision and we have seen this time and again, every election, whenever the right of reservation or delimitation is rested with the political class, there is a controversy. Do you think that to end these uh, controversies once and for all, the right of reservation and delimitation should solely rest with either the Election Commission of India or the State Election Commission and the political class should be away from it? It's a very good question. Hmm. Uh, see, this is this delimitation is basically what is known as gerrymandering. When you manipulate the boundaries of a constituency or a ward to benefit a particular candidate or a particular party. Uh, these powers have to be vested in the state election commission. But I have a rider there. Merely vesting it in the state election commission and calling it an autonomous body does not give you the results which it, which, uh, it ought to give. Yeah when the person who mends that particular body is himself a government servant in some other capacity. Mm. Now, if he Which is Which also I could pointed out in correct. this order. So, if he is subservient to his masters mm. in the other role that he plays in the government, merely because you make him sit on an autonomous body like this, he, he can't play Dr. Jekyll and Mr. He Hyde. doesn't suddenly become exactly, autonomous. Exactly. <laughs> so therefore, if you really want purity in elections, yeah. you have to give it to an independent, autonomous body. And the independence should and, be in the true sense of it. And an independent, autonomous election commissioner. Correct. And in the true sense of it. You yeah, can't have... Sense, not, not, a pro, not just a projected sense of it. Absolutely. Shashikan <laughs> uh, very frankly, as uh, counsel for the state election commission, would you like these powers to rest with the state election commission because every time, every election, we are seeing the repeat telecast of the same script. Only this time, there has been, the discrepancies have been so glaring, so blatant that High Court had no other option but to crack down on it. Do you want this right finally once and for all? You spoke about the budget session. The budget session is just a month away. Do you want a st state government to bring in an amendment and pass these powers to the state election commission, which the political class of the state has been consistently saying they will do it, but in reality not doing it. 
uh, I will tell you, Article yeah. 243, and there are other provisions in the Constitution, which basically mandate that the right to superintend, uh, that the duty to super, over superintendence, direction, and control of all the elections should be vested in the State Election Commission. Mm -hmm. That is what is what is the man mandated law, and that is why I am not saying that it should be done because of one reason or the other. Because of the, it is because of this reason that I feel that the powers that is necessary for amendments are to be required to be carried out in the Panchayat Raj Act as well as the Municipalities Act. Mm. Now, uh, uh, some statements were made in the past by certain politicians that these amendments will be carried out. Those statements were made when the when the when the petitions are pending, mm. uh, as far as Jilla Panchayats are concerned, and uh, and I feel that they have changed their uh, uh, tone. After the judgment of the Honorable High Once Court. Once the election the, is over, they forget about no, it. No, not about the elections. After the judgment of the Honorable High Court, they are <laughs> quiet about it. Yeah. So ultimately, the only solution in the, all this scenario is uh, they should go by the Constitution. All mm -hmm. these powers which are there, certain other states have already carried out the necessary amendments. Mm -hmm. All these all these powers related to elections should be vested in the State Election Commission. Yes. Yeah. Jashkan Bab, Didi Bab, thanks a lot for joining with us. Thank I'm you. completely out of time. Keep watching. Go ahead. Thanks. Thank you. Marching to new heights of development under the dynamic and young leadership of Dr. Pramod Savan. A visionary leader, a meticulous administrator, tirelessly working on the dream to take Goa ahead. Goa Ahead is brought to you by the Department of Information and Publicity, Government of Goa.